My name is Josh Friedman, and I started a company called Eleven Wireless, which is a software provider for the hospitality industry, and then later started a company called NedSpace, which is a co-working facility for entrepreneurs. And now I'm helping a friend of mine's company, Rumblefish, which is a music licensing technology company, grow and, and, and move into the future. I started my career uh, as an intern at Intel when I was in college. It was an Oregon State University and decided I was trying to look at either going into the investment banking industry or into technology. And this was 1996, so there was a lot of really interesting things happening in the technology industry then. And what I found was that the, I wanted to go down the technology path. That was very interesting to me, and part of it was because it was a very interesting time. And what I found in working at Intel for three and a half years was that the company didn't know what to do with entrepreneurs. So prior to doing that, I'd run a painting business when I was in college for two years uh, called College Pro Painter. So I was one of the first uh, franchisees, I was, I was the first franchisee in Oregon, and I ran that business for two years. And College Pro Painters really set you up for being, you know, helping you learn how to be an entrepreneur. They teach all things like you know, lead generation and marketing and cold calling and how to do estimates and sales and running painting crews and supply chain, all sorts of really fundamental business things, but it's just a painting company. Um, during two summers, I did quite a bit of revenue, and, and I learned a lot about how to build a company and grow a company. Again, a small, you know, uh, blue-collar-oriented company. But I realized, you know, going into '96, that I, I really wanted to be in technology. So going into Intel was an interesting transition because it was the first time that I was able to do something in the technology sector, and I frankly didn't know what I was doing. I, I wasn't an engineer by training. I, I was studying liberal arts in college, but I knew that I wanted to get into technology. And I'd always taken things apart and, and broke things and put them back together and fixed them. So it was a very you know, natural transition for me. Uh, when I was at Intel, I had some really incredible mentors. And it was one of the things that helped me and, and later in, in my entrepreneurial path, uh, being a mentor and having mentors around, it's one of the most critical things in my opinion. Um, Intel helped me realize that I had uh, two people that were uh, absolutely quintessential in, in my uh, growth. One guy, his name is Chris Thomas, who is now the chief strategy officer for Intel or something like that. Um, and another one is a family friend who originally got me into, into Intel. His name is Justin Ratner, and he's now the CTO of Intel. And both of those people provided some pretty incredible mentoring for me while I was there at Intel. After uh, about three and a half years, I realized it was not for me because it was just too big of a company, and, and really Intel didn't know what to do with entrepreneurs. It, it just doesn't really have, at least when I was there, didn't have a, an, any method for dealing with people who wanted to go build things and do things. It was kind of just, you know, Dilbert style cube farms. Um, so I uh, looked around and, and this was uh, 1999 now, um, into 2000, and there was this great company called Triple R uh, that was going, there was 20 some odd people. And um, I, through another mentor of mine outside of Intel, Spencer Brown, who's a very important person in my life, uh, he connected me with the CEO of Tripwire, and I ended up going there and worked there for about three years as well. And learned a lot of good things and a lot of bad things about growing companies. Uh, Tripwire raised, I think, somewhere around the realm of like $50 million over, over the, the time, um, uh, over its, its uh, business, and it just sold uh, to a private equity firm. Um, but there were a lot of interesting lessons to learn, things to do and not to do. I was um, uh, Wyatt Starnes was the CEO, and I was spent a lot of time with him in strategy, and I was doing business development. And, and there was just a lot of good things and a lot of bad things that I learned through that experience. Um, and then in 2001, 9-11 uh, had happened, and I left Tripwire. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next, and I decided to start Eleven, my first company. So there are two things that when I'm talking to a new entrepreneur, somebody who's never met me before, there are two quotes that I use that really define me as an entrepreneur and, and what I believe are, are very important things to to build in terms of traits and, and, and philosophies. The first is a quote by Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. I think that more than anything else, it's not about your intelligence, it's not about your background, your parents, your education, anything else. Tenacity, I think, is one of the most important things as an entrepreneur. Knowing that once you start down that path, you don't stop, no matter what. If you fail, get up, dust your shoes off, you know, your shoulder off, and, and, uh, and, and go do it again. So that quote is a very important one. The other thing that's very inspiring is uh, etched in a piece of aluminum that somebody gave me once. It's an unknown quote. It's, what would you attempt to do if you knew you would not fail? And that's it's built a little bit on the tenacity element, but the idea is just go in with both feet. Don't worry about you know, the ramifications, that things that might be behind you. Just go forward and see what happens. Regarding hurdles, I, I think that the 
biggest hurdle that I had to overcome, I was 25 or 26 when I started 11, was uh, the fact that almost everybody around me did not want me to succeed in some capacity or another. And this is no dig against any one person or people, but people just wanted me to get a job. People wanted my parents especially. People were like, oh, you'll never be able to succeed starting your own company. You don't know anything about technology. You don't know anything about the hotel industry. And so there's this constant um, sentiment of like normal normalcy, like people just trying to say, hey, just go do the normal path. And that was actually a really hard thing to get around because the, these are all the people in your life, your friends, your family, you know, former coworkers, people you go out with, people you go climbing with or whatever, and they just kind of want you to just be rank and file like everybody else. And, and that was actually a very difficult thing early on. Um, College Pro Painters was not really my company, it was a franchise, so you know, it was in an operation, but it, it was sort of my business, but not really my business. But Eleven was really, that was it. It was, you know, my co-founders and I, and, and we were building the company up. And, and so that was a very difficult thing to, to get past. Um, starting a company in Portland in 2001, um, that alone was a hurdle. Uh, raising money from angel investors, being a young entrepreneur, never have been done this before in raising money. Um, it was a very, very difficult environment to raise money, and especially at that time, post 9-11 post paper shutters um, and the uh, the angel investors in Portland the ecosystem has gotten a lot better but it's still you know not great and there haven't been a lot of you know big home runs so people aren't um, uh, people aren't used to putting money at risk they, they kind of think of this as like some bond they're investing in or something and so it, in turn it's very hard to get people to invest we're seeing a little bit more uh, you know, in terms of number of successes and exits in Portland, which is helping a lot. But in 2001, that was really hard. So it took us like, I don't know, two plus years to raise the money that we did, which was in the millions. But it, it was a very complicated, difficult process. And we never got a big chunk of money at once. So we had to build this very scrappily you know, oriented company along the way. And that was, in and of itself, was difficult uh, you know, in, in addition to everything else we were doing in terms of like just building the company and building the software and building the business. And so. That's something that I hope changes, and that's something that I'm very passionate about changing over the long haul in the future, is really helping build a more um, uh, cohesive and um, well-aligned uh, investment uh, ecosystem in Portland, helping angel investors invest a little bit easier into, into companies and get behind entrepreneurs. So I think the thing that probably tripped me up most along the way, and this is, you know, outside of even just business, is not trusting my gut. I think that there's a very you know, natural element to a person trusting their gut. And in the cases where you don't trust your gut, in almost all cases, if you have a decent gut and you listen to it, you're, you're gonna be wrong if you, if, you don't, if you go against what your gut tells you to do. And there were multiple cases of, of, you know, with all the businesses I've been involved in, whether it was Intel or Tripwire or Starting 11 or Netspace or even Rumblefish Now, um, there are parts where if I'm going against trusting my gut, it's, I always end up wrong. And so I've learned along the way to always trust my gut no matter what. And even if it means I have to go against every single person in the organization, investors, whatever, I know I need to trust my gut. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not driven by ego. I'm a very humble person. And so when I decide that something is right or wrong in the case it may be, then I stick to it and I, I go with it no matter what. And the cases that I haven't done that, it's, it's actually caused some big problems. We made an early uh, decision in how we were gonna build our software with Eleven. And this is back in 2002. And, uh, and as funny as it may sound, we were talking about three-tier architecture versus two-tier architecture. And I knew that we needed to build three-tier architecture, but I didn't have any experience really in building a software company. And we had a software developer that was way smarter than I was and he wanted to go after two-tier architecture. And that actually cost us probably a year, maybe even two, down the road because we made some you know, architectural decisions that I wasn't comfortable with and we should have actually just done because you know, I knew that, that that was the way it should go. And that's an example there where I mean, it, it literally cost us money and time in the marketplace that we would have been much better off had we done what I felt was the right thing. And there are other countless, you know, countless other situations like that. And I think that over time the lesson learned is no matter what, just trust your gut and, and act on that. So I, I think the, the resources that I've found most useful are, uh, first of all, Starvups. Uh, it's an entrepreneur uh, nonprofit that I'm involved in. Um, a bunch of my friends started it. I joined right after they started. 
And Startups is a peer support group for entrepreneurs. So we joke around and say it's kind of like AA for entrepreneurs, except we're trying to encourage people to do something and not, not do something. Um, we get together, we talk about each other's businesses, we talk about the, the dirty things that you, you know, other people shouldn't know about or don't want to know about. You know, I'm running out of money, I'm not going to be able to pay my employees, what do I do? How do I hire somebody? How do I raise money? How do I get bank financing? The, the things that are very difficult and a lot of entrepreneurs aren't willing to share, we do that inside of Starbucks. And so the whole time that I was building and growing Eleven, having that group of people around me, the peers around me, was extremely important for me. And as a, a resource, generally speaking, having that group was incredible. And Starbucks is a private group, so we only have about 20 companies in it. Um, we graduate companies out. So like Eleven is no longer in uh, Starbucks in, the, in Starbucks proper. It's now an emeritus company, so there are new companies that come and go. But I'm still involved in the group. And and really, for entrepreneurs, I think there's nothing more important than having peer support around you. Whether it's Starbucks, whether it's OEN, which is a great resource, uh, whether it's SAO, whether it's um, having dinner with a bunch of your CEO, founder, friends, just something that regularly gives you the outlet to talk to people and figure out you know, the stuff that you're having a hard time with or things that you can offer and, and advice to help people go through. There's nothing more important than that, in my opinion, in building a company. The, the current abyss here at Rumblish, we're taking the company in a new direction. So we're, we've always been about music licensing. Um, and where we're going and the market that we're pursuing is synonymous with where the business is, but what we're doing is doing it in a way that nobody's ever done it before. And this is coming very soon. We're launching in the, in the middle of July of 2011. Is that, wait, yeah, 2011. Sorry. Uh, years are off. Uh, we're launching in, in just a couple weeks, um, so it'll be interesting to look back on this video. But we are doing something that nobody's ever done before, and we expect that to be... To, to be great growth. We expect it to, to deliver, uh, we're, we're solving a problem that nobody's been able to solve before using technology, which is great. It's exactly what we should be, you know, what should be done with technology. Um, but it's risky. We don't know. That we, I mean, we're basically betting, betting the farm on this thing. And so we hope that we'll be making the right decisions, but, you know, we could end up with a fizzled response from the marketplace and people aren't ready for it yet. And it may be a year or two out. And if that's the case, you know, we're, you know, it's, it's not what we expect, but it could happen. And so it's a very interesting place to be right now. Um, with Eleven, we're, we're sort of uh, at an abyss in terms of we've been in the market for a long time. We've, you know, we're one of the leading, if not the leading, software provider in the, in the hospitality industry. Um, and it's taken us a long time to get in with the major hotel groups. We're now in, and they love us, and we get more and more adoption. But now we're trying to grow the company faster than we've ever, ever been able to grow. We're in our 11th year. Uh, November of this year is our 11th year in, in business. Um, and so, which is also, by the way, 11, 11 of 2011, which I think is pretty cool. But um, we, you know, it's, it's very interesting. And you never really know. I mean, there's, uh, there's some, some of my mentors that have had their businesses, they've almost failed two, three, four times. And each time, they're basically at that abyss. And if they're smart and they're paying attention, they're listening to customers and, and paying attention to what the needs are in the marketplace, they've tend to make, tended to make right decisions. So hopefully that we do that. I think the thing that it most inspires me to keep going is building and continuing to grow companies. You know, financial success is interesting, but it's more about real accomplishment. And that accomplishment, uh, while it might yield something financially or might yield something in terms of an asset or might yield something in terms of a new company and operating and, and enabling a lifestyle, it's more important to me to you know, accumulate these successes and then also transfer that knowledge to other people. It's a really deep passion of mine is to help entrepreneurs down the road. And so the more success that I'm able to create, the more I'll be able to actually help others with. And I found uh, in building NetSpace, that was a really interesting part that I thought I would be much older before I actually was able to help other entrepreneurs. Um, and I was able to help entrepreneurs at 35 years old, having had just some success behind me in building a couple different companies. So it was a very interesting element you know, in, in seeing that, uh, that success you know, limited success, in, and I've had no exits really up to date, but some, some companies that are doing very well, that those, the lessons learned along the way have been things that I can parlay into knowledge in talking with other entrepreneurs, whether it's through NetSpace or startups. And that actually is a very inspirational part for me because, you know, I'm not a very um, uh, pedantic person. I, I, I like helping people. I don't, want, I don't ever want to think of myself as some, you know, big store of knowledge, but when I talk to an entrepreneur, I like to help them. I like to just, you know, 
make sure that they aren't making mistakes that I made or making mistakes that I've seen growing companies along the way. And that's a very inspiring thing for me, is to be able to parlay that knowledge. It's kind of a difficult question to answer. I actually, <laughs> I'm not joking, Ace actually does inspire me, my dog. He's, he's a, a very peaceful, loving, you know, he's super excited all the time, but it's just there's something about like having that that dog energy around, which is actually funny because I didn't grow up having dogs at all. And, but I think uh, from a business perspective, uh, Richard Branson is a, a big inspiration for me. He is obviously wildly successful, but has a, um, a way that he goes about things where he just says, screw it all, I don't care about anything, I'm just going to go do it my way. And it doesn't matter if that's, if that's wrong, if that's right, if I screw up along the way, it doesn't really matter. And, and he gives that air off. And I really don't care about fame in, in any way, shape, or form, but if there was one person I, I could meet, it would be Richard Branson. Another inspiration for me is, is a dear friend of mine. He's one of my best friends now. His name is Nitin Khanna. And Nitin started a software company uh, with his brother and grew it incredibly over 10 years and ended up selling it to EDS. And part of the reason he's inspiring to me is that he's we're like brothers. Um, he has an incredible heart. He has, uh, really cares about those in his life. He's an amazing father, he's a great son, he's an incredible best friend. Um, but what's interesting is that I've, growing up, I, I always felt almost bad about making money. I felt like it was not a good thing. I think this is a very Portland trait. I think a lot of entrepreneurs here have that trait where they're just afraid to do something because of the financial reward. And Nitin was incredibly successful financially. I mean, you know, lifetimes worth of money that he, uh, when he sold his company. But what he's teaching me and he's teaching other entrepreneurs is that it's okay to make money. And frankly, if you don't make money, you're not going to be able to do anything else. And screw, you know, having fun and taking vacations. I mean, we're talking about being philanthropic. We're talking about sp being able to spend time with other entrepreneurs. If you aren't able to create financial success, you won't be able to do those things. And it's, it's, I mean, he's from India, he's been living in Portland for 10, 12 years, and uh, he just, there's this inspirational element to what he brings to the table, and that's something that isn't a Portland trait, and it's now something that I'm learning and other entrepreneurs are learning, and it's a really exciting thing, because it kind of takes us to a new level. I mean, all, you know, all my entrepreneur friends, in the, you know, the Starbucks guys and, and all sorts of other folks are really great in terms of uh, what the... Uh, what they bring to the table, but from a financial perspective, none of us have had real success yet in terms of exits. So, so I, I think that uh, there's an interesting ecosystem element, and, and one thing that I hope to parlay to you guys, whoever's reading, you know, watching this, but is as you have success, you need to, to bring that success back around. So if you have an exit, be involved in, with entrepreneurs, either financially or spend time with them. Um, we've got, uh, you know, Jive is set to go public, uh, or, or talking about going public in 2012. Tripwire sold. Uh, there are a, whole, a handful of other companies that have sold in this past year. There are some companies that have gotten some pretty substantial VC funding, and that's going to lead down the path of, you know, proper exits. And what, um, what's a very interesting and important element is that we bring this back around. So I was raising money for Eleven. Uh, Paul raised money for Rumblefish. When these companies have exits, hopefully there's some good financial return, we as entrepreneurs are going to be investing back in the community and investing in entrepreneurs in the Portland area. And it's an ecosystem. And if it's not adhered to, then the system breaks. And so one of the things that I think is very important for entrepreneurs once you've had success is to be able to, to pay it back in, pay it, back, pay it forward, basically. And you're going to get a return you know, if you, if you invest you know, in a, a relatively um, uh, you know, intellectual way and you trust your gut with the investor, or the, sorry, the entrepreneur, and you, you really like pay attention to the deals that you're looking at, you actually get a return on your money as well, but you're helping the entrepreneur be, have success and, and create success in that company.